Hi, I'm Rody, and today we're going to migrate the default Flutter counter app, which you should be very familiar with, to the Signals package. If you're coming from Preact Signals, Svelte Runes, Angular Signals, or Vue Reactivity, then this video will also help you learn how to use them in Flutter. Let's start by navigating to idx.google.com and creating the default Flutter project. Once we have the app running, you can see that when we click on the floating action button, it'll increment the count as expected. This example uses set state for incrementing the counter. Every time that we call set state, it'll rebuild the widget tree by calling the build method. You should write your build method in such a way that it can be called potentially every frame, like when adding animations to your app. You can reduce rebuilds by moving state update cycles to separate widgets, but in this case, we have multiple things all using the same state. To migrate to signals, for this example, we can start by adding the package to our current project through the command line. In IDX, open up a new shell and type flutter pub add signals. Now we can import the library at the top of the lib slash main.dart. Making sure to select signals underscore Flutter since it includes some extra helpers when working with Flutter outside of pure Dart projects. We can start by simply replacing the int that we defined for the counter variable with a signal. You should get an error in the increment function and we can fix that by adding dot value to the counter variable. Now, when we reload the app, you should see that everything still works as expected. You may notice that we did not have to call the dot value where we're displaying the text for the counter state. This is because the signal automatically calls the dot value method in two string, two JSON, and call invocations. While signal values are great, we want to be able to react to when the value changes and perform side effects. We can create an effect inside of our init state that will react to when the counter value changes and we can call set state in one place without having to worry about where it was updated from. Let's go ahead and add the init state method here. Now we can grab the counter value and then call set state. Then in the increment counter method, we need to update the value and remove the set state wrapper. Now when we reload the app, we will see that every time we increment the counter, the value still goes up as we expect. But all we had to do was change the counter value. This is really powerful because we can pass around the counter signal anywhere in the app and wherever and whenever the value changes, as long as the widget is mounted, the widget will rebuild. If you want to use effects in your widgets, make sure to dispose of them by calling the cleanup method. You can learn more on the signals docs at dartsignals.dev. This may remind you of value notifier and change notifier, but in this case, we don't have to add a listener to the signal. Instead, all the dependencies are tracked in the effect when we read the values. But what if we wanted to rebuild the text widget and just display the contents when the count changes and nothing else? Well, that's exactly why the watch widget from the signals library exists. It's kind of like an effect that's used to track the signals when creating a widget. Let's do this by clicking on the text widget and wrapping it with the builder. Then we can simply rename it to watch.builder. Watch is a drop-in replacement and you can use it anywhere you would a builder widget. Now we can remove the effect logic from the init state altogether and when we rerun the app, the app should still work as expected. If you don't care about surgical rendering and just want to write signals that update the build method, then there's an even easier option. Add with signals to the state class, which will give us some extra methods to create local signals. Then we can update our counter declaration to use the local signal instead. And finally, we can remove the watch widget wrapper from the text widget.
Now for the last time, when we reload our app, we will see that it continues to work as expected. To wrap up, we've gone over a variety of ways to create and work with signals in Flutter. You may be expecting a single way to create them, but one of the advantages of signals is that it can meet the complexity of your project by them adapting to your needs instead of the other way around. You may also find that with signals, it's easier to port logic between Web and Flutter now, since they have the same reactive primitives in place. As always, you can find me on GitHub and Twitter is at Rody Davis. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them in the comments or reach out. Thanks for coding along, and we'll see you next time.